Most biomedical engineers you might find in a hospital or in a lab. But every day I get to work with fighter jets that can fly faster than the speed of sound. Hi, my name's Celeste and I'm a biomedical engineer at Boeing Defence Australia. I have a cool job because I get to support the Royal Australian Air Force F-18F Super Hornets and E-18G Growler aircraft. to coming into the office every day because where I sit I get a front row seat to the action watching the jets take off along the flight line. I work as part of a multidisciplinary team of specialists that maintain and optimize the physiological performance of our aircrew. While they're out there pushing these jets to their limits they're flying at top speeds of over 1500 kilometers per hour and pulling up to 7 G's. My fascination for science began with human anatomy and physiology, which led to my university studies at Griffith University in biomedical science. But it wasn't until that first year that I realized that science isn't always about finding the answer. Sometimes it's about knowing the right questions to ask. Electronic and biomedical engineering gave me the opportunity to combine these two passions with a degree that applied engineering principles to unique problems in healthcare. Going into my degree, I saw biomedical engineers working in hospitals or as researchers, and it wasn't until I got exposure to aviation and aerospace that I started to see how I could apply this skill set to supporting aircrew operating these high performance aircraft. The great thing about having a degree in engineering is that it equips you with a skill set that is widely transferable across many industries. Working for the world's largest aerospace company as a biomedical engineer really highlights the diversity that a career in engineering can offer. Some of the core skills that I call upon day to day include applying critical and analytical thinking when approaching problems, a sound knowledge of engineering mathematics, and to exercise science communication principles as a tool to inform and discuss outcomes to our customer. As part of the Fleet Health Monitoring and Investigations team, we're responsible for monitoring the performance of the environmental control system and the breathing air systems on board the jet. The ECS, or the Environmental Control System, is a complex system that draws bleed air, the hot air of the engines, and undergoes a number of conditioning processes to maintain factors like temperature, pressurization, and humidity that's then either delivered to the aircraft avionics for cooling purposes or to the aircrew as air supply. Before it reaches the cabin, the air is passed through molecular filters that increase the oxygen concentration to then deliver oxygen-rich air to our aviators. These oxygen systems are critical for aircrew to maintain adequate oxygen supply to compete with the increasing altitude. By analysing flight control systems and the ECS data, we can reconstruct a comprehensive picture of how the aircraft behaved in flight and then use this data to inform maintenance, optimise the jet and to assist in any investigations. Arguably, the most complex systems in the aircraft are the humans on board. My role focuses on researching, testing, and engineering solutions to better understand and enhance the intricate relationship between human physiology and the aircraft systems. Working alongside the Air Force's Institute of Aviation Medicine, my role is to help close the gap between engineering and medicine. Humans on Earth are well adapted to the continuous force of Earth's gravity, but for aircraft and spacecraft that are designed for prolonged acceleration, these forces can be up to nine times greater and can start to induce physiological and musculoskeletal changes in those experiencing the acceleration. Training to overcome these extreme forces while executing a highly complex workload at 30,000 feet in the air is no easy task for aircrew. So our role as engineers is critical to ensure they're in the best position to do their job. I find inspiration in the challenges that this complex environment presents for humans and how I can use engineering to help overcome these limitations. For me, the driving force behind choosing this field of study was to centre my career around helping people. What makes my job so rewarding is knowing that while our air crew are out there keeping our country safe, I'm working hard to make sure our aviators get home safely too. 
Throughout my studies, I spent a lot of time volunteering with Griffith Sciences. Being a STEM ambassador was a great way to grow my professional network, help bring science into the community, and just a fun way to make friends. As a woman in engineering, STEM engagement is particularly important to me. Not only so I can share my passion for science with the community, but to help foster an inclusive and diverse engineering profession for all. So this is Dean, our mannequin that wears the life support equipment. As you can see, they've got the full kit of what the air crew need when they're going flying. This is the combat helmet attached to the breathing mask through the bayonet here. The oxygen is delivered through here and it also houses the communication system that plugs into the aircraft. This is the oxygen hose that feeds into the regulator and this controls how much oxygen is delivered to the air crew to make sure that it's meeting their breathing dynamic needs. And this is the communication system that plugs into the aircraft to make sure that air crew can talk to each other and that they can hear all the cautions and warnings and alerts that they need to. So one of the most important things about the air crew life support is the G-suit. When air crew are experiencing the acceleration they do in the cockpit, it's important to make sure that they can sustain their normal physiological operation. And part of this is when you experience G-force, our blood tends to pull in our extremities as we're experiencing the acceleration. So the G-suit interfaces to the aircraft and uses the pressure system from the aircraft to inflate the suit. And as it inflates the suit, it pushes the blood up to the torso and into the brain to ensure that we can maintain the air crew within their physiological margins. The field of biomedical engineering has helped push the limitations of the human body to empower us to achieve incredible feats in airspace and in outer space. So for me, the ultimate question is, how can the field of biomedical engineering help transform the future of space exploration? <laughs>